two-time champion going for your third heavyweight title. How are you feeling going into this match? Um, you know, uh, I'm focused and, uh, you know, uh, prepared for the task at hand. There's really not much else I can do. You know, a lot of people you can worry about what the other guy's going to do, but I've been here long enough to realize that that's energy uh, ill-spent, and uh, I'm just trying to focus on what I can handle and what is in my control. Now, being that you're already a two-time champ, you're going for your third round, when did you really realize just how tough you were? Uh, you know what, the secret of the thing is, is I'm not very tough. <laughs> I'm actually, uh, I try to avoid pain at all costs, and uh, I think that's one thing that makes me a little bit smarter, is I try to use my brain and, uh, and work around things. So uh, being a skilled fighter is not necessarily a tough fighter. Yeah, now I know in your past interviews you did say you don't really like conflict. You tend to sort of run away from that. So when you're gearing up for a fight and you know there's no escape, once you're in the ring, you're in there, how do you how do you overcome that and face that and, and go go ahead and move forward with the fight? Well, I guess I guess when I speak of conflict, I speak more of an emotional level. You know, I don't like to really have, uh, you know, issues where people are upset and they argue back and forth and make scenes in public. Um, I'm very quick and shy to run away from those type of situations, you know. If uh, you want to win an argument with me, just start yelling in public and uh, I'm going to walk away. Uh, but as far as inside the octagon, you know, uh, that's to me is, uh, is just physical chess. We're going back and forth, move for move, and there's a, it, that to me is a, um, a different kind of conflict. That's a sporting conflict, that's a adversity, you know, man versus man, and uh, that situation I relish in. Now, you've also said, you've also been in this sport for over 10 years now. How has the UFC grown and changed from your perspective over the last 10 years? I mean, before it was struggling to get people to fill in the arena, and now you guys are basically treated like rock stars. Uh, that's what, I guess, the biggest difference is, is that uh, just the notoriety. And, uh, you know, for example, having to fly out on a Monday to do a press tour, uh, this is what's something that if, you know, when I first started in 2001, it was never the case. We were uh, begging people for press time and, and uh, walking around and doing call centers and whatnot. Uh, now, you know, there's only, you know, I, I get so many uh, requests for interviews. A lot of them get turned down. I don't have enough time to go around and give everybody their own separate interview. Uh, so just as far as the popularity and the, the demand for exposure uh, is incredible explosion. And then switching gears a little bit, you are a Vegas boy. The fight is in Vegas this week. Does that give you a little more confidence going in, knowing that you're sort of the hometown hero? Uh, being the hometown hero is one, but actually, you know, I think the biggest advantage is that, you know, I go with my wife and kids and family and tow. I, I, I make the joke that I'm the Griswold of the MMA world. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, like the last fight, having to go through customs and uh, uh, through a terminal, you know, going into Canada with, you know, a two-year-old and a six-year-old and an eight-year-old all in tow, uh, not so easy. Uh, whereas now, you know, uh, we don't have to travel. The fight's down the street. I'll sleep in my own bed the night before. In between doing uh, press conferences and media obligations, I know where to eat. I can go home. Uh, whereas when I'm in another town, I have to have a, you know, a group of 30. We've got to figure out where we're going to eat, how we're going to get there. And can you imagine ordering food, how long it takes to eat? You know, it could be a three-hour adventure, and we don't have three hours. So uh, it's a huge advantage for how I live my life to fight at home. And then, because you did say you bring your family along with you, uh, I'm obviously a female, and I get a little squirmish watching these fights. How is it for your wife and the kids to sort of see you in the octagon? Well, it's like any sporting event. You don't want to see your father or your husband get hurt physically. But, uh, you know, in the 10 years I've been there, I've never not been able to uh, go home after the fight. Never had to spend the night in the hospital, you know. That stitches and, uh, and obviously a couple uh, bruises to my ego. But uh, I, I rub it off really easily. You know, they have seen now after my, you know, the last loss I had a couple of years ago, I, you know, shrugged my shoulders and said, uh, you know, it happens. And uh, we were in uh, New Jersey at the time, and I was like, yeah, let's go down to Manhattan and get some pizza. Um, so I think because they see that I realize that it's, you know, it's a fight, and I'm fighting another top-level fighter in the world, um, guess what? I'm not always going to be successful. As long as uh, I, I have something I can go back to and work on, it's fine. And, and I, I try to relate it mostly to, like, a football player. I'm sure people see their husbands who play football and they get cracked and daddy gets smacked around, but it's a game. They realize it's part of it and, you know, hopefully there's no injuries in, uh, other than that, you know, guess what, one team's going to lose, one team's going to win. And are any of the kids sort of trying to follow in your footsteps? Are you raising little fighters? No, they'll all be martial artists and they'll all train at it because of what it uh, gives you, the discipline, the, the way I conduct myself, the strive I have to improve myself every day through what I read, through what I watch, through how I, 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 my behavior. That I want to instill in my children, the martial arts, the problem-solving skills that I have. It drives my wife nuts uh, that I always land on my feet. I never seem to ever not be able to make myself through, and I attribute that to martial arts. As far as being a professional martial artist, Artists. Nah, I want them to be lawyers and doctors. They're all in <laughs> private school. And I, and I always relate that, and my analogy is to being a musician. 
a lot of people out there love music and they may be good at it and, and someone might make it in the world and they make it as a musician. They want their children probably to love music and understand it, but it doesn't necessarily mean you want them to do it for a living. It's a scary way to make a living. True. And then my last question, tell us a little bit about, about your t-shirts. I know these are your new thing. Uh, you know what? This is a, a UFC's line. Uh, and this you can go out on the UFC uh, webpage and actually order through their apparel. And, uh, you know, I, I wore this shirt just basically because... Uh, you know, I started hearing a little bit of the echoes of this being be an America versus Brazil type thing, and I, and I really dislike that aspect of the sport. You know, I understand people can be proud of their ethnicity. You know, my father's from Cuba. I'm very proud of an ethnic background and, uh, that's Cuban. But at the end of the day, I'm an American, you know what I mean? And, but when we walk into the octagon, we're all fighters. We're all martial artists. I don't care if you come from Brazil, if you come from India, if you come from Japan. You know, we're the same person, you know? So I just make sure that sometimes the fans, and, I, and I, I hate it when I hear that, if a person gets up on stage and they'll boo him because he's from a different country. And I'm like, but the guy's a good guy. He's a great fighter. What are you booing for? I don't like that aspect. Well, bringing them all together. Thank you very much. It was nice talking to you. Good luck. Hey, I'm Frank Mir with the UFC, and you're watching TerezaOwens.com.